All right, welcome to another episode of the Couch Coaches Podcast, where we talk about everything going on in sports, and we have NFL news, we have end of the NBA season kind of wrapping up, we got a couple weeks left, and things are getting very tight for us Warriors, NCAA tournament, men and women, jam-packed. So we are going to start with comments that Deion Sanders made about his son, Shadur, not being in the draft this year. But then next year when he goes into the draft that he's going to put his quote is going to pull an Eli, which is also what John Elway did and basically refuse to go to certain teams if they think that they could be potential draft picks. And I just kind of want to know your guys' thoughts on uh, an athlete or a parent and athlete combination telling a team that they're not going to go to that team. Uh, Dean Greg, I'm going to start with you. What do you think about Dion's statements about basically telling teams we're we're going to potentially say no to you? Well, uh, you know, it's uh, it's like I, I heard I heard the commentator saying this a couple of days ago. That's Dion. Like you 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 preference your thing by other parents. Other parents can't do that. They don't have the clout to to say you know you know. And like you say, Dion is already they're already millionaires and stuff. Other parents are just you know, and kids are just trying to get money. So they're not going to be sitting here telling teams, oh, I ain't going to go play for you or whatever. They're just happy to get into the league. But uh, uh, somebody of, of Dion's stature and, and, and their notoriety and stuff, he could do that. So I, what he said, yeah, he could, he could say that. And, he could, and, and believe me, the, the, all the GMs and everybody is listening to what he says. And he's going if, to if, go ahead. Yeah. So, so I, I 100% agree with you. And, and I wasn't even thinking about that aspect of it, that, that, Eli Manning did it. Well, Manning's the Manning's are like NFL royalty. Dion's the greatest corner ever. Um, Elway was a you know he was a, they knew he was going to be a superstar when he came in. But do you do you agree with it? Well, I kind of do. I agree with it because why get your kid in a situation where they're going to have a, a horrible career? You know, in your opinion, that why you know that's just that's exactly what the Manning did. They said no, we're not going to. Who, who's that? The Giants drafted yeah, him. Who's that? Chargers. The char yeah, the Chargers. We're not going to that. You know, we're not going to the Chargers. You know, Elway said I'll go play. I'll play baseball. You know, before I go to Baltimore. That was when they were in Baltimore. So if you have that kind of clout in case you know in cachet, yeah, why why ruin your kid or your career? You know, so I I I agree with it. Give your kid the best opportunity to succeed. Because because you can you know a team has. This isn't run well. Exactly. What? Okay, so what if, just to play devil's advocate, what if the Raiders have the number one draft pick next year and he says no? He wouldn't say no, but yeah, if they... <laughs> and, and, and again, we're not... You're Devin, that's, that's a super <laughs> hypothetical. We're not going to have the number one draft pick next year, so... Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> just, just check it. Just check it. Just check it. All right, Brother Bill, thoughts on, on Dion and choosing teams? I understand that I understand it, but do I agree with it? Well, typically when, if you think about the quarterbacks who have done that, who have refused to play for teams and how long it took them to be successful as and, and, or even win a championship. Yeah. John Elway did it. How long did it take him before they finally won a Super Bowl? Eli Manning did it. How long did it take him? So, I mean, you can do that. But just understand that if you're willing to basically, as a quarterback, say, you know, I'm just going to wait until I'm ready to go and play in the NFL, the right team pick me, then just understand that there's no guarantee that you're going to be successful. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, because you never know what's going to happen in, in, once you land with a team. Sure, a team who may not be, you know, championship caliber drafts you. That doesn't, things can change in just a few years. So you just never know. So, I mean, like I said, if they say if, you, if he's willing to make that bed, he has to be willing to lie in it. Yeah. What, you just said, the whole, what you just said, Deacon Bill, you, name, you gave the examples, but every one of those players you named were eventually successful because they went to an organization that was, you know, somewhat solid for, found uh, for organization. You get off to Siberia somewhere, you ain't going to have no chance to be, to come out. But just because that team drafts you doesn't mean you stay there. What I'm saying is, depending on, like, even I'll use Steve Young as an example. Not because he's an ex-49er, but where did he go? Tampa Bay. T 
Tampa Bay, just wallowed there in Tampa Bay until he went to the 49ers. So he got the opportunity. And then within a few years from when he started, he wins the Super Bowl. So he, things can change in sports in just a few years. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I will say for, for the two guys that did choose not to go, the Colts never did anything while while uh, Elway was playing. I mean, I think they made like an AFC championship game with uh, with Harbaugh. Like 90, I think it was the year the Niners won the Super Bowl. I think they went to the AFC championship game against San Diego. And then, um, but the Chargers were actually good. And the Chargers with their, with their uh, team should have done a lot better than, than they did. Cause they did. I mean, they got Phillip Rivers and then LaDainian Tomlinson. And I mean, they had, they had a squad and they couldn't, they couldn't do anything. I just remember them losing to the Patriots at home and just, and LaDainian's just crying, running around all mad and stuff. And that's that's the point. See, you go to an organization, even though if they got the talent, they still can't still can't win. So yeah. that's 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 why they wouldn't go there. Yeah, I would I would say I would be more so the whole borough Cincinnati thing to me is the only kind of kind of like chink in the armor for this one because Cincinnati is a horrible organization. And I thought if anybody's not gonna go to a team, Joe Burrow should not go, should not go to Cincinnati. And it's turned out pretty well. So, I mean, granted, things can change very fast in football. Like, you get the right GM in there. You, I mean, some teams you change owners and stuff. So, it, things can change very fast. But, but Burrow's the only one where I can think of where he went to a just a terrible organization, terribly run, and things have looked pretty good. Granted, their drafting has been good. The coach seems competent, all that stuff. So, I'm sure they got a different GM and things have, things have been better. But that was the one where I'm like, eh. Don't go to Cincinnati, and it's he's you know they're if he stays healthy, like it's all on him. It's not the, like the organization is well run. It's like can he stay healthy enough to actually finish a season? That's a good point because they were an Aaron Donald play away from winning the Super Bowl against the Rams. I mean that's how. So it's like the team was successful in spite of the way it was run and the leadership and the ownership and so forth. Yeah, uh, the, the, yeah, their their talent overcame some of the issues that the organization had. Yeah, it's like and and it's like when Andrew Luck went to the Colts. Colts are not good. <laughs> Andrew Luck went to the playoffs like every every year with them with this horrible team that somehow and unfortunately they're so horrible that he you know he quit because he was getting killed. But it's yeah, yeah I mean there there are definitely very poorly run organizations. Like if if I were Dion, I would never let my kid go to the Panthers. They're the Panthers or the Giants. I think both those teams are just making just horrible decisions. Yeah. Um, NBA season is wrapping up. We have about three weeks, two and a half, three weeks left. Uh, Warriors did win tonight. Good showing against the, against the heat. But I have to admit, as I'm watching them and watching this kind of season go, I'm concerned that we are not going to get that 10 spot or the ninth spot. And we're going to be sitting outside watching, uh, Watching Houston take our take our place, um, brother Bill being being one of the Warriors fans here, um, I would love to know your thoughts on how we're looking uh, for the rest of the season, and if you are confident in that tenth or ninth seed. Not confident in the ninth seed only because you've got basically eleven games to go, and I mean right now they're either going to be two games back or three games back. I think of the Lakers because of, um, the Warriors won tonight. So I think as of right now, I think they're two games, maybe it's two games behind. Yeah, um, two and a half, I think. Two and a half, but the Lakers are going to double overtime against Milwaukee. So if, if, if they're three games back of the Lakers and they only play one more time, I think it's going to be long odds for them to pass the Lakers to try to, you know, for the ninth spot. I mean, things could happen, but again, I just think that the Lakers have LeBron, the Warriors don't. You got. I mean, I think they just have the Lakers and the LeBron. They have. I remind you the Kansas City Chiefs, right? When it comes down to brass tacks, you know where your bread is buttered. You know who to go to. Um, in terms of holding on to the tenth spot, Houston Rockets are red hot right now, and the Warriors struggle at home, even against teams that they're arguably better than. So I'm more concerned about whether or not they can even make the playoffs to your original point. Um, I wouldn't want to bet on them holding on to the 10th spot. I'm just, I'm just going to say it. I mean, they just have, they have to get on 
they have to show come some consistency at home in order to hold that 10 spot. They seem to play better on the road than they do at home. And I, I it's just a head scratcher for me. Yeah. And it's pretty, it's pretty even as far as home and away for the rest of the season too. So there's not, there's not like a, an advantage there um, to us being on the road, which is ridiculous. Uh, Deacon Hill thoughts. On the Warriors making, yeah. a, play, making a play in the playoffs. Uh, yeah. I, I agree with Deacon Bill. Oh man. I mean, brother Bill. <laughs> I even you say Deacon Deacon Deacon. Deacon. Come on, man. Put it, put it out doing? there, man. Put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Um, I was just thinking the other day, I said, well, how did that really work out for the, for the uh, Warriors that they sat clay? I think they should have kept clay and they should have kept their lineup going and just try to battle it out. Because I, when you start le- this late in the season, they start making those type of changes like that. I don't think it really helped them. I think it kind of, you know, play try to be the you know the, the good sport about it and, and 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 accept that role, but I think it messed up their 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 chemistry and and that you know you when you had Draymond Clay and 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 uh, Steph, you got you guys knew what you were going to get night in and night. It might not be all good, but you was going to get that consistent whatever it was going to be is going to be consistent. So um, I I don't see them. They they seem like they're either on or off. They're not you know like with the you compare like with the Lakers. The Lakers could be either way. They could in the same game. They could be on and off. The the Warriors, if they're off, they're just done. Even if they come out and they're playing good, they can play a good game. And I I think that's where their weakness is. They can't they can't uh like turn it back on in the, in that same game. They got to have hot from the start and, and go and you know run you off the court or whatever. So yeah, I don't see I, they're, they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So and and when they're playing a lot of playoff games and stuff. You know, they're playing a lot of playoff teams. Not that there's a ton of playoff teams lower than them because that's not how the NBA works, but they're playing a lot of teams that are going to be playing for seeding and, and moving up and stuff too. At, at least we play Houston once. That's that's good. We can, you know, we can directly affect them, you know, pushing them back at least one game. Um, but then that's one of those games where if you lose that game, then we, I mean, what are we, what are we doing? Um, sticking with basketball, but shifting to college. And we were kind of discussing before um, the women's tournament is popular. It's doing well. Um, the The Iowa game yesterday had five, six million viewers. It's like the, the top rated uh, women's game outside of the final four ever. Uh, we're able to see a lot of these. Like, it seems like all these top teams have, and duh, this makes sense, but they all have the superstar that then you can kind of track. Um, you know, you become ne- not necessarily a fan of the team. Like, I've never cared about about uh iowa ever except for uh having kittle go there and you know but you know following caitlin clark and we're following lsu with i mean they have multiple stars usc's got a big star um south carolina's got got the star got the coach that's kind of a star um so there's a lot of like personalities and i think and maybe it's because that they the women tend to play at least you know three four years before they go pro because especially with nil they can make as much money to play in college as they can go in pro um, but you're seeing quality basketball. You're seeing t- you're seeing team basketball, and you can't always you know you get superstar you know dudes in the on the men's tournament, but but except for some, maybe some of these smaller schools, you're not seeing that like high quality you know basketball play with in it within a team. Um, so we were talking if you see any potential upsets, and granted we have one kind of built in because as we talked last week. Iowa and uh, LSU being in the same bracket, we're going to lose one of these superstars, superstar teams before we even get to the final four, which is unfortunate. But if you, if with what you guys have seen, if you guys see any potential upsets, and I, I think the upset is to me is like North Carolina or South Carolina not winning because they're undefeated. And they seem to be, you know, that's like North Carolina, LSU, one of those teams. If you guys see a potential upset um, in the women's, tournament uh deacon hill i'm gonna start with you you know I, I was listening to uh to first take this morning i was listening to shannon sharp and he was saying that you know it used to be that all the talent went to like two three schools it was uh, yukon and and you know, a couple other schools that had all the talent. now this talent is so spread out in so many different schools i don't you know i think a lot of we we get caught up in the hype of of lsu and we and 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 Iowa because of the name players and stuff. But as I started to look at these other teams, these teams are pretty well matched. 
So I'm not I'm not counting out. You know, I I think I don't know uh, I, who who does LSU has who do they have next to um tomorrow? They, LSU. Uh, LSU plays UCLA on Saturday. Oh, Dog UCLA. fight. Yeah, yeah, all that's what I'm saying. See, so I'm not even counting like you, you know, they're going to get to Iowa and that's going to be it. These teams are so well, uh, you know, matched that that um, yeah, it could go any way. And I love. I I was just telling telling you guys, I love what I saw with uh, USC. Uh, Ju- Juju Watkins, that that young lady there can play some basketball. She has total ball control. Um, uh, tempo to her game. She's not out of control. She shoots the jumper. She shoots the three. She shoots off the glass. So, uh, you know, the, the talent is so spread out with the women that is it's very interesting. And I wouldn't call any. I I I ain't calling nobody. You know, guaranteed to get to the championship with this field. Yeah. So, so you're not even seen as as it being an upset because there's so many good teams it, it, yeah, out there. There's a lot of good teams out. There. Even Stanford. Stanford's gonna be hanging around there. You know. Yeah, uh, Brother Bill. Yeah, I would say um, watching the games, the watching the this, this last round, um, LSU got tested. Um, Iowa got all they could ask yes. for from West Virginia team who arguably didn't have as, you know, wasn't as off- offensively as talented as Iowa. But those ladies, they played some defense, and they like nobody's business. I mean, they held Iowa, a team that averages 90 points a game, to, to 64. I mean, that's defense. They had a – I mean, they um, – ball control. They did everything right up until the last few minutes. So I would say if you're not doing anything Saturday, there's some games to watch on Saturday. You got LSU, UCLA, Colorado, Iowa – USC Baylor and Duke Yukon that's on Saturday and I don't see sure they each of those teams you have a favorite but I don't think it would be an upset for any of those games those can games I could see going either way just because of what Deacon Greg said just the, comp- the competitiveness and the skill of the way these ladies are playing which is nothing new but there's just some great matchups and you know Bill what we and me and Joe were talking about what got me is that the the women have a home court advantage. You know, like like Iowa, these teams the, the first two rounds they're playing at home, so that's a huge advantage. Now they're going on the road. So <laughs> yeah, all off. Good point. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is like a home game. What's going on? But you're right. That's the way it works for the women. The first two rounds <laughs> on my home court, so much for neutral neutral territory. And and West Virginia still made Iowa sweat. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that that's that's an even bigger thing. I mean, because not only is it is it a home game for Iowa, but it's like the hero Caitlin Clark's last game. So people are going bananas and they still, like you said, their defense held them. And it was, it was, I mean, up until like the last like minute, you're like, man, is Iowa going is Iowa gonna lose this game? It was, it, it's crazy. And, and yeah, the home, the home court advantage is like, yeah, I think it makes it more exciting, but man, that is a, that is a huge handicap for the, for the away team. This is crazy. Yeah. All right. Um, Last subject. Uh, draft is coming up. Obviously, we we know the top. We know all the draft picks and stuff. And something that keeps coming up that I don't understand. And maybe you guys have a different point of view than I do. So, so the Bears are one. They're obviously picking a quarterback. It's obviously going to be Caleb. We know that. Two is Washington, and three is New England. And Washington and New England have basically said that they are potentially open for business for trading back, but. They all, both of those teams need a quarterback like in the worst way. And I can't think of a rational reason why you would trade that spot away when there's, there's no quarterbacks to pick up in free agency. The only way you're getting, you, know, you, you have the quarterbacks, you have like Jacoby Brissett and I don't even know who the, I don't even know who the, who the, who Washington has right now for their, for their quarterback. Why would you trade out of two and three? instead of getting the quarterback um brother bill i'm going to start with you because i can't think of people are talking about this i'm like do they know what they're talking about they don't have a quarterback i can't figure it out i'm going to assume that says gamesmanship leading up to the draft because i agree with you i can't see a rational reason why you would not pick if you if you say you're not going to pick a quarterback then to me in my opinion you're saying you're not going to be competitive the next season 
I mean, this, so you're already writing off an entire season, and you're going to wait until the 2025 you know, off season to do something. So I'm just wondering whether or not that's just some gamesmanship now um, leading up to the draft. Because even if you get players without a quarterback, uh, no playoffs, right? Um, and if you finish at the bottom, then maybe you improve your draft position. So I'm with you. I can't, I can't think from a business standpoint and from a just, if you really want to try to be competitive, I can't see a, a case for not picking a quarterback when you don't have one. Especially if you're two or three, like I can understand if you're like number eight, cause you're, you're going to get stuck with the, the bottom of the barrel as far as like the top quarterbacks, but they're two and three. I mean, they have, I mean, they're not obviously, obviously not going to get, uh, Caleb, but they got. You know, one of the other McCarthy or or Knicks or who's the other guy for uh, Oregon? Um, they got Daniels, Daniels from LSU. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I think there's, my take it, on it though is like I, I agree with De- uh, with Brother Bill that that um you know it could be a smokescreen. They always everybody does that uh, in the draft. They never want to show their hand anyway. But like I I think after 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 um. Caleb and and Daniels from LSU, I think there's at least four quarterbacks that it's a toss up. Mm-hmm. But I could see them trading back. They're not saying that they're going to draft a quarterback. They could they could trade out of that that those two mm-hmm. those spots and still come up and get a, a quarterback and get some more draft picks. So I, that's why I'm looking at it. They might just be trading back and could still get the quarterback because after the first two quarterbacks, there's a, there's at least four quarterbacks. Uh, I, I see uh, McCarthy from uh, Michigan. He's moving up. They, they're really impressed. A lot of people are really impressed with him. So there's a, I see about at least three or four quarterbacks other than those two top quarterbacks that somebody could snag. I'm, I'm, my, my Raiders, I'd be happy to get uh, one of those quarterbacks other than the top two. But I'm, I'm really hoping for, for, for LSU quarterback. That's what my hope is. But I'd be satisfied with, with Knicks, Pen- Penix, I mean, from, uh, right. from Washington. I'd love him. You know, even more now I'm watching this guy, um, you know, um, McCarthy. You know, there's there's some quarterbacks out there, so we'll see. I, it, it's weird to me that that a quarterback moves up at the combine because the combine's not a not in game situation, and I think it's weird that McCarthy. Like I'm watching McCarthy, he's throwing like 10, 11 passes a game, um, with a team with a ridiculous running game and stellar defense and all that stuff, and it's like, is that? Is that and and he's kind of he bounced around a little bit in call. I mean, not I mean everybody bounces around now, so I guess that's not a big deal. But but to have somebody's stock go up that much, where everybody's like, oh, this kid's great, this kid's like a da 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 da, and maybe that's just his agent putting all this stuff out there. But I don't understand a t- like a, like he's running around in his underwear throwing the ball to with no defenders to a wide receiver that's not being defended. Like it's I I, I don't get it. No, what they were saying though is he wasn't asked to do. That's just like what look at look at the jump. Not comparing him to Michael Jordan, but look at Mike, what Michael Jordan did at at uh, North Carolina, and then what he did in the pros. When you when you're in a system that's keeping you into it, you you're doing the system. So now you got you get out and you can you know actually use your actual skills and stuff. It's, so it's different. So yeah. But he was also in a. I mean, I can I I can see. So I can definitely see the ego of the coach going. Oh man, they couldn't do anything with him. But man, once once he gets in here, I can, you know, I'm gonna get him. But he was also in a pro system with a pro head coach. Yeah, but I'm saying it's not the it's not the fact that they couldn't do nothing with him. We didn't need to do nothing with him. We had enough wet. We could run our offense this way. We don't need to ask you to do anything, but just do this right here. You know where I heard that same thing? Uh, when we had Jimmy G, I heard that same thing. Oh, we didn't. He didn't have to pass the ball in the, in the NFC Championship game. We could just run the ball. And now Jimmy's. <laughs> You better watch out. He's with the Rams. He's coming to get you. No, not you know what? If we have Jimmy G to worry about with the Rams, I'll take that every day of the week and, and, and twice on Sundays. Yes, yes. No Aaron, no Aaron Donald and Jimmy G. I'm here. I'm here for it all, all day, all day. All right, all right. So uh, that that's all for today. We are going to take a break next week because I'm out of town and the whole filming thing just won't won't work out with that. But we'll be back in two weeks. And we're going to have, we'll be closer to the draft. We're going to have a ton of basketball to talk about by then. So um, thank you guys for joining us. And we will see you in two Tuesdays. Take care. All right, brother. See you. All right.